Hey guys, it's me, Carly. I wanted to come on here and make my Sierra Burgess is a Loser review. And as you can tell, I'm my hair is not in its natural state. I straightened it like two days, well, my mom straightened it two days ago, but I wanted to wear it straight. But of course, the day I decided to wear it straight, it has to rain like cats and dogs outside. That was yesterday, so now it's a little poofed up. And I thought I'd just show you my hair. And this is also going to be my Sierra Burgess is a loser video. I have to. I liked, as you can tell, I love wearing headbands in my videos. But, any. So, my review on Sierra Burgess is a loser. I'm going to have to sadly say that that is a very accurate title. And it's not positive. It's not very, it's not as heartwarming as I thought, and the only reason I was interested in it is because, sorry, is because there was a plus size girl, um, Shannon Piercer was in it, and uh, for you Stranger Things fans, she is named, her character's name is Barb in Stranger Things, the one who accidentally cuts her hand while trying to shotgun a beer, like trying to stab it, and then... Yeah, so I thought it grabbed my attention because it was a about a plus-size character played by a plus-size actress, and it was going to be about self-love and being accepted for who you are, and that personality doesn't matter, or well, personality matters and looks don't, and that she was going to get the guy, but it was not a very satisfying movie for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, there are three character. There are three main characters. Um, Jamie, who is played by Noah Centiano, uh, hotness. He's my favorite version of Jesus. Um, from the Fosters. Uh, then there is Veronica. I don't know the actress's name who plays her, but. If I figure it out, I will put it in the comments or the description down below. And then um, Sierra Burgess, the main character, of course, because that's what this movie is named after. Sorry, I'm just... I'm fluffing my hair. But anyway, that's what the movie is named after. Or who the whom the movie is named after. And the only few things I liked about it are the cast had really great chemistry together. Um... Of course, Noah Santiano was in it. I liked the fact that Chrissy Metz from This Is Us is in it. And she's a plus-size woman playing a plus-size woman. And, um... So, I would love to see more of that. But anyway, I thought I was going to like this movie because, again, I thought it was going to be about lust, love and acceptance and yada, yada, yada. No, it basically is Sarah Burgess catfishing Jamie throughout the whole movie. Like, I find that really offensive because if you guys have, you guys would know if you've watched my video, the time I was catfished, I find that really offensive and... It also just proves, although it did teach me that people who catfish aren't always old, creepy men. It can be anyone. It can be like a teenager. It can be a 20-some-year-old girl. It can be anyone. Anyone can catfish. It's illegal, and you shouldn't do it, but it's not some old, white dude with gray hair, probably, you know, Jack it off. Sorry for that visual, but to young girls doing porn, no, it it can be pretty much anyone. Like for example, um, I think the other one. I think a the one or like a show that did it better or handled catfishing a little bit better was the episode in Glee, where this character named Wade slash unique Wade is unique is 
a girl in a guy's body. I think he's trans, or he's just a crossdresser, but he identifies as a woman. So, to me, that makes him trans, I guess. Sorry, I'm not trans. I'm not, like, trying to be offensive. But anyway, he ends up catfishing um, Sam because I don't know what pronoun to use. She or he falls in love with Sam and Wade slash Unique was really embarrassed because he's a boy and he cross-dresses or she cross-dresses. God, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm very confused on what pronoun to use for Wade, but I thought Glee did a little better job of that and like... Uh, Wade slash Unique did a showed more remorse than Sierra did because Sierra still got the guy in the end and she spent the entire movie catfishing him. But oh, and um, Leah Thompson, I believe she did a the woman from Back to the Future slash switched at birth. Was Sierra's mom. So the casting was amazing. Good job on the casting. Storyline was horrible because. Um. Anyways. So the catfishing starts when. It all starts with how Jamie, you know, being a typical boy, uh, is flirting with Sierra. It's like, hey, you're a pretty girl. Can I have your number? And so. Sorry. <sighs> It's not adjusted to my likings. Sorry. I. Okay, anyway. So Jamie goes up to this girl named Veronica. She's considered the hot guy. Or hot guy. She's considered the hot girl of her school, the popular chick, the cheerleader, you know, the cliche popular girl. And he goes up to her and says, Oh, hey, you're cute. You want to exchange numbers? So they exchange numbers. But Sierra, or Veronica, thinking that she's funny, gives her Sierra's number. Now, I know, yes, I can admit it was wrong for Veronica to give out Sierra's number without Sierra, Sierra knowing about it. But I'm not going to blame Jamie because he was just, you know, again, being a nice boy and wanting a hot girl's number. So, yeah. But anyway, the thing that bugs me, though, is that when texting, he thinks he's texting Veronica and talking to Veronica, but he's actually talking to Sierra. And Sierra could have just said, hey, this isn't Veronica. My name is Sierra Burgess. I, I'm sorry that Veronica gave you my number. Uh, or we can keep talking if you want. And then they could have thanked Veronica later. No. Sarah just goes on pretending to be Veronica. Catfishing this nice man. Or this nice boy. And he thinks he's still talking to Veronica. And they talk on the phone. But when they FaceTime. Um, it's Sarah's face in front of the screen, screen. She pretends to have a bad internet connection. And it's Sierra talking and Veronica's trying to lip sync or, you know, like sync her mouth up to the words without actually using her voice. So that was a bit of a problem. Um, he's never seen what Sierra looks like, but when they finally do meet, the first time they meet in person, uh, she fakes death. To him. Yeah. And mind you, Jamie, Noah Santiano's character, has a deaf little brother. So you think faking death to a dude, to a guy who has a deaf little brother is a good idea? What the hell, writers? Like, we have a lot more, we don't have enough deaf representation. Like, the closest, well, we do, but we don't. But if you want good deaf representation where deaf people play actual deaf people, how about, like, go watch Switch That Birth? I don't know. But 
why did you have to have your main character fake death to a guy who is who has a deaf little brother? That's that's ableist as hell. That's just really ableist, and that's that's not okay at all. Nah. Okay, so then it goes on, and then um, then there's this date scene, which makes me so mad. Because it's Veronica and Jamie on the date. Because he doesn't know Sierra. But Sierra is lurking behind them. And there's this scene where they're by the car. And how they didn't hear Jamie or Sierra. How, wait, how they didn't hear Sierra? Or Jamie. Did, no, how did they not hear Sierra under Jamie's vehicle? Like, she's not being very quiet. She's making loads of noise. And, yeah. So, anyway. um, Then there's... The, but during the date, there is this kiss scene. Now, it would have been consensual had it been Veronica and Jamie kissing. Although, technically, that's still dubious consent. Because uh, Veronica is kind of helping Sierra catfish Jamie. But... When the kiss comes, it's Sierra, like, they have to cover Jamie's eyes so Sierra can kiss him, but not Veronica, because otherwise then it would look suspicious. So basically, Sierra and, Sierra sexually assaulted this guy by kissing him without permission because he consented to kissing Jamie not Jamie, Veronica, and you do that. Now, if the re if they had reversed the genders, just could you imagine if the genders were reversed? Oh, all hell would break loose, and there's just a lot of double standards. That if a man did these, if a man did these things. All hell would break loose. Um, yeah, so that was a bit awkward. And just... It was not good. Although the one good thing... Some of the good things was Veronica's backstory. And how her dad left her. And she stays with her mom. Who kind of is a stuck-up snob and a perfectionist. And the mom constantly tells uh, her daughters that their father died. But what really happened is that the father ran out on Chrissy Metz's character, Veronica's mother, for like a 20-some-year-old woman or something. I don't know. So it was really weird to watch that. And, okay... I don't mean to sound like being rude, but why are, like, the fat people in this movie or the plus-size people portrayed as villains? I mean, it, it seems a little stereotypical. That feels very stereotypical, and it just doesn't feel right. Uh, I don't know. It was just not a good movie in general. Okay. Um, I'm looking down at my notes. Oh, okay. The one, then the other thing, Veronica and Sierra were forming a glorious friendship. Or not a glorious friendship. They were forming a beautiful friendship. Until Sierra does this. Sierra Burgess. Okay, so before they go to a party. Or no. So they go to a party together. Veronica's having some character development. And her ex-boyfriend, Veronica's ex-boyfriend is trying to get with her. And she doesn't really want any part of it. And she's trying to get back together with him. Well, she is. But now she realizes she doesn't really want any part. But then the next day at a football game, that Jamie comes 
that Jamie is playing in, because he's from an opposing school, he sees Veronica, and then they kiss. And Sierra sees them kiss. And out of stupid, petty revenge, Sierra puts a photo, has her other guy friend put a photo up. Oh, yeah, Sierra has a friend in this movie, and I totally forgot his name. I'm sorry, but I'm just focusing on the really main three characters. So, anyway, Sierra asks one of her friends, a guy friend, to put up this photo, this, scandal, or this uh, scandalous photo of Veronica and her boyfriend up in front of the entire football stadium. And Sierra's best friend goes, yo, hey, come on now, that wasn't cool. She's like, well, come on, you hate Veronica. So, it was, like, Sierra's just fucking mean. Sorry, I don't mean to swear, but, and she's like, um, Sarah really did not have a character. She basically whined about her looks. And Veronica even flat out said, because, you know, after humiliating Veronica, Veronica's like, believe me, Sierra, your things are, or your looks are the least ugly thing about you. And then, um, so Veronica leaves upset. Sierra leaves upset. And then starts crying to her parents like, Oh, you think it's easy for me to have self-esteem and uh, look at you. You're skinny and pretty. And, uh, and it it didn't hold m to me. It would have held more weight if Sierra was constantly bullied and had an explosion. It was just trying to walk around all confident and she hadn't done any of the things she'd done. Then it would have been more weighty. But because of all the things she does has done, and I'm not saying there isn't some validity to her statement of what she's feeling but I'm just saying that it makes it less meaningful because she's kind of mean person and she's mean and she's just terrible she was like t totally terrible to Veronica and she's catfishing this innocent boy and it's just not very satisfying so yeah so the end of the movie comes veronica and sierra make up um veronica convinces jamie to go out with sierra sierra gets the guy which shouldn't she shouldn't have gotten the guy period because she lied to him and catfished him and sexually assaulted him by kissing him without permission and she gets them because she writes a pretty song, I guess. So, I, I don't know what to think. And I thought Insatiable was going to be terrible. But it deals with a lot of <coughs> realistic issues. And also, somebody told me that fat suits were fat phobic. But, because I've, and I'm not trying to sound mean or anything, but I've never been plus size or really overweight. And I'm, like, not trying to brag or anything. I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging, but I do want to know why people find fat suits fat phobic. And, by the way, Chrissy Metz, who is a plus size woman, like an overweight woman herself has worn a fat suit. So is it fat is a fat suit fat phobic? Or ugh. if a fat person wears a fat suit, is that still considered fat phobic? I don't know. And I'm genuinely asking. I'm not like trying to be facetious. I'm not being facetious, I swear I'm not, but I I genuinely want to know. Yeah, so anyway, Sierra gets the guy, and I I have no clue why, because if I found out someone catfished me and just lied and lied and lied to me, I would not be very satisfied. I would be very angry. 
I would not want to talk to that person and I wouldn't even want to go out with that person. It just was not a very satisfying ending. And the worst, worst of all, um, Veronica and Jamie, not, fuck, Jamie, Veronica and Sierra are not punished for their actions. They're not held responsible. They're not ever called, well, okay, they're called out, but Jamie freaks out at them, which rightfully so, because he he just finds out he's being lied to and he doesn't know what to do, so he had every right to freak out. And you just, oh, this execution of this movie was horrible. And um, also, Pretending to have a disability, no matter what it is, no, not okay. Not okay. It's, that's not cool. That's not cute. And it pretending to be deaf, especially pretending to be deaf to a other to a character who has a deaf little brother, or in real life, or has deaf family members. No, no, thank you. That's not cool. That's not okay. That's not all right. That's ableist as hell. You need to not do that. You need to... What, in my personal opinion, I think they should have... Sierra Burgess should have told the truth. Like, the moment she got the text, or maybe be like, hey, I'm sorry, this isn't Veronica. My name is Sierra Burgess. And yeah. And then, um... Let's see. Then Jamie should have confronted Veronica and then and then Sierra should have said, hey, let's tell the guy. They should have told the guy the truth together. But the way the truth came out, it came out after Sierra decided to humiliate Veronica. And that just was a really shitty thing to do. So overall, this movie is really not... Really gets an F. I mean, it got hit, like the advertisements looked much better than the actual movie, and the actual movie was just a fail. I'm sorry to the people who worked hard on it, but yeah, you could have done better, and I'm very disappointed in you guys. So anyway, these are my thoughts on Sierra Burgess is a loser. Um, if you like this video or want to see more content hit the subscribe button uh you should like and share this video and probably my next video will be dedicated to my friend here on youtube uh chris jones he is now the wicked merman and i will be doing a review of lady and the tramp 2 scams adventure and my thoughts on that so anyways have a good one and 